Iron is a remarkable material for building. It's not just for making doors. Builders can create entire structures with it, some of which are famous worldwide. Take the Eiffel Tower, for example. This iconic structure in Paris is made of iron lattice and stands tall at 1063 feet. It took over two years to build and was completed in 1889. Surprisingly, it held the title of the world's tallest structure until 1930 when the Chrysler Tower was built. But iron structures don't just have to reach for the sky, they can also span across rivers like the Brooklyn Bridge. Completed in 1883, this bridge stretches over 6,000 feet across the East River. It's now a cherished landmark listed on the National Register of Historic Places. If you ever find yourself in New York, don't miss the chance to see the Brooklyn Bridge. You might even drive across it. Another incredible iron structure is the Empire State Building. Completed in just 13.5 months in 1931, it has 102 floors and stands 1,250 feet tall, 1,454 feet with the antenna. The building contains around 57,000 tons of steel columns and beams provided by U.S. steel, making it an architectural marvel. But do you know the history of iron and how iron was made? And do you know about some big iron mining companies? Well, in this video, you will get to know all these mysterious things. So let's dive in the exciting journey of iron. A thousand years back, a man stumbled upon something groundbreaking while examining a meteorite crash site. Iron. This chemical element, with its symbol Fe and atomic number 26, proved to be a game changer. Unlike copper, iron was stronger, leading to the creation of various tools and weapons like axes, plows, and spears. These advancements allowed for easier tree cutting, farming, and hunting. Initially, iron tools and weapons were not as sturdy as their bronze counterparts. However, the world saw a significant shift when people learned to make steel by heating iron with carbon. This discovery revolutionized various aspects of life, prompting the establishment of villages and the evolution of different occupations like blacksmiths, carpenters, and farmers. Iron doesn't naturally occur in a usable form on the Earth's surface because it readily reacts with oxygen to form iron oxide. So, the initial step in processing iron is to remove this oxygen. This process began in the Mid-Bronze Age, marking the early signs of iron production. The primary method used for smelting iron during this time was through structures called bloomeries. These bloomeries heated iron ore using charcoal as a fuel source. When charcoal burns, it produces carbon monoxide, which then reacts with the iron oxide in the ore to produce carbon dioxide and iron. The temperature in the bloomery is carefully controlled, ensuring that it remains above the melting point of impurities but below the melting point of iron. As the process continues, the heavier iron consolidates at the bottom of the bloomery, while the impurities form a molten pool called slag, which can be drained away. Once the iron is removed from the bloomery, it's in the form of a porous mixture of impurities and iron. It requires further working with a hammer to consolidate the iron while the waste material is beaten off. This process results in wrought iron. Initially, iron production was limited due to the small quantities produced. However, it revolutionized human life, particularly in agriculture and trade. Iron ore was more abundant than the copper and tin used in the Bronze Age, allowing for widespread production in various regions. Communities could now create their own tools and weapons without relying on imports. The introduction of iron plows and scythes improved agricultural efficiency, leading to increased food production. This allowed for larger populations and the development of specialized trades. With the rise of iron production, society became more stratified and trade flourished. Iron Characterized by its shiny metallic appearance with a gray tinge, turns reddish-brown as it rusts. It is dense and requires extremely high temperatures to melt. The Latin name for iron is ferrum, 
while the word iron itself may have originated from earlier terms, meaning holy metal. Iron is a paradox. It rusts easily, but remains the most crucial of all metals, with 90% of refined metal being iron today. It's primarily used in manufacturing steel for civil engineering and other industrial applications. Evidence of iron smelting dates back to around 5000 BC in Mesopotamian civilization. The Iron Age officially began around 1200 BC and lasted until 332 BC, succeeding the Stone and Bronze Ages. During this period, people worldwide began crafting tools and weapons from iron and steel, marking a significant technological advancement. The Iron Age propelled many societies forward, making life more manageable in an era where reaching 45 was a feat. Iron tools revolutionized farming, enabling the cultivation of tougher soils and the exploration of new crops. This era saw the introduction of iron plows, sickles, and other farming implements, drastically improving efficiency. Some argue that we're still in the Iron Age, considering its profound impact on agricultural and military sectors, and its role in triggering the Industrial Revolution. Now let's know about some big iron mining company. In Pará, Brazil, you'll find the Carajás Mine, the largest iron mine globally, churning out a staggering 1 million metric tons of iron ore every year. This mine is renowned for its top-notch ore quality and cutting-edge mining methods. Down under in Western Australia's Pilbara region, Royalty Minerals operates the Yandikugina Mine, a big name in the iron ore industry, contributing about 7 million tons annually. Its focus on efficiency and safety makes it a significant player. Rio Tinto runs the Pilbara Mines, a cluster of iron ore mines in Western Australia, collectively producing a whopping 25 million tons yearly. These mines are famous for their vast ore reserves and efficient operations. Heading back to Brazil's Minas Gerais, Anglo-American operates the Minas Rio mine, pumping out around 26.5 million megatons annually. It's renowned for both its high-quality ore and eco-friendly practices. In South Africa, the Sishan mine, owned by Anglo-American, is a heavyweight in the industry yielding roughly 29.2 million tons of iron ore each year. Its strategic location facilitates easy transportation of ore. Hancock Prospecting's Roy Hill Mine in Western Australia's Pilbara region is a state-of-the-art facility producing about 60 million tons annually thanks to its cutting-edge technology and efficient supply chain. Fortescue Metals Group's Solomon Hub in Western Australia's Pilbara region is a pioneer in integrated mining, churning out 65 to 75 megatons of iron ore annually. Its focus on innovation and sustainability makes it stand out. FMG's Chichester Hub in the Pilbara region is another major player, collectively producing 100 million tons annually. Innovation and sustainability are at the forefront here as well. Further in the Pilbara region, the Newman Mine is a significant producer, extracting about 132 megatonnes annually, thanks to its strategic location and advanced infrastructure. In Liberia, the Bong Mine is a key player in Africa, extracting approximately 200 to 230 million megatons annually, crucial for the country's economy and provides employment opportunities for locals. But do you know how these big companies mine irons? Iron mining begins with the study of the land by geologists to find potential iron ore deposits. They may use satellite imagery, aerial surveys, and ground surveys to pinpoint suitable sites. Once a promising area is identified, drilling is done to collect core samples from the earth. These samples help determine the quantity and quality of the iron ore. To access the iron ore deposits, explosives are sometimes used to break up the overburden, which is the rock, soil, and other materials covering the ore. Heavy machinery like excavators and bulldozers then remove the overburden to expose the iron ore. The extracted iron ore is transported to a processing plant using trucks, trains, or conveyors. At the processing plant, 
the ore is crushed into smaller pieces to make it easier to separate the iron ore minerals from the non-iron bearing rock. After crushing, the ore goes through screening to separate particles of different sizes. Then, it undergoes further grinding to achieve a finer size using grinding mills. Next, magnetic separators are employed to separate the iron ore from other minerals by exploiting the magnetic properties of iron. In some cases, froth flotation is used to selectively attach air bubbles to the iron ore particles, separating them from impurities. Excess water is removed from the iron ore concentrate to prepare it for transportation. The processed iron ore is then transported to steel mills or export terminals by rail or ship. At the steel mill, iron ore is combined with coke and limestone in a blast furnace to produce molten iron. The molten iron is refined to remove impurities and adjust the alloy composition. Finally, the refined iron is cast into various forms, such as ingots or slabs, for further processing into finished products. We commonly use iron to create steel, a sturdy material found in many things like kitchenware, vehicles, and buildings. It's durable and resistant to corrosion, making it perfect for various purposes. Recycling iron, especially from vehicles, offers significant environmental benefits. It reduces the need for new resources, cuts down carbon emissions, and conserves energy. For every ton of steel recycled, we save 1.5 tons of iron ore, lower emissions by 86%, and decrease water pollution by 76%. Despite vast reserves and ongoing exploration efforts, the demand for iron keeps growing. This poses challenges but also opportunities for sustainable practices. As infrastructure projects expand and economies develop, finding alternative sources and promoting recycling become crucial. A significant iron shortage could have severe economic, technological, and environmental consequences. It would impact industrial production, raise costs, and hinder technological innovations. Moreover, mining and processing iron ore can lead to environmental issues like greenhouse gas emissions and habitat destruction. To address these challenges, we must adopt sustainable practices. Recycling Iron is key to conserving resources and reducing environmental impact. We also need to improve extraction and processing techniques while exploring new reserves and alternative resources like iron-rich asteroids and deep-sea mining. By embracing sustainability and innovation, we can ensure a steady supply of iron for future generations while mitigating environmental harm. What do you think? Let us know in the comments section and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for joining.